just in terms of the artificial intelligence idea that this the yeah. AI is recommending things to you yeah. based on this yeah. model that it's built of your personality and your decision making and it knows all these things about you that you might not even know about yourself and it's quite um, sophisticated. Yeah, yeah. Um, could that same thing be used to, I suppose, to make a person more sophisticated at um, their yeah. attentional so this, apportioning? Yeah. Excellent, excellent question. And then we, we're moving mm. on to this sort of, uh, uh, you know, morally thin ice in some very powerful yeah. ways, right? It's, it's, it goes back yeah. to, you know, Plato's noble lie in the Republic. Uh, mm. Is it right to manipulate people so they are more likely to be tempted by the good? Um, mm. And then what, what, what that comes down to for me is what are the, what's the differences? Because these three things overlap. And we, we'd have to pull them apart very carefully. What's the difference between manipulation, deception, persuasion, and education, right? Um, <laughs> and, and how do we how do we pull them apart? Because presumably, what we want to say is we want morally justifiable education and persuasion to be the only things that are allowed to alter people's uh, behavior. Um, yeah. And then it be, and that means we got to get we have to get very, very clear on what we mean by education. I recommend the work of Zach Stein, uh, Education and Time Between Two Worlds, and uh, some of the videos and some of the stuff, uh, excellent on uh, excellent reflection, some of the best. I mean, his, what, his fundamental thesis, well, one of his fundamental theses is, let's reorient education back to the intergenerational project of cultural ratcheting and off of feeding the market with what it most needs. Um, mm. and, and, the, and the idea is the, the second is a short-term game for long-term pain. Because uh, when we lose intergenerational transfer as the primary goal of education, we are undermining our primary adaptive advantage. Unlike other organisms, we, particip we generate and participate in cultural ratcheting. You and I don't have to learn from scratch, right? But... So we we got to really, really get clear about reorienting education and persuasion. That's part of what I've been doing all this work about expanding and re-enriching and reinvigorating our notion of rationality and reason, binding it to right to spirituality, etc. Because that will make people invested again, wanting to participate in rational persuasion. Hopefully, mm. that would help distinguish education and persuasion from deception and manipulation so that we could clearly instruct the AI so it was persuading us and educating us rather than manipulating and deceiving us. Yeah, mm. that seems to be the line, isn't it? I was speaking with Massimo Pigliucci recently and oh, I did a podcast yes. with him. Um, Massimo was talking about you can't become more virtuous through nudging because it's not intentional. It's just kind of being, you know, you're just being pushed towards it, um, which is kind of what's happening now. It's a big behavioral yes. modification machine. Yeah, yeah. Um, nudging is, it, yep. Yeah. He's right. Um, so one of the defining differences between education and perception, uh, education and persuasion on one hand and deception and manipulation mm -hmm. on the other is exactly this issue about whether or not your agency, your appreciation in both senses of the word and your apprehension of your agency and your ability to, to enact it is being enhanced or diminished, right? And we, we tend to think of education and persuasion as enhancing our agency and deception and manipulation, like nudging, which is a kind of bullshit, by the way, uh, mm. as reducing our agency. Now, the primary thing we're supposed to be committed to as a culture, especially a democratic culture, is affording people the enhancement of their agency, 